So the first thing I'd like to do is offer some apologies on behalf of our chair, Julie Newman, who was due to welcome you this morning. Julie is covering from a for a team member and delivering our pop-up poetry club at present, but she'll be joining us later, ready to chair her session. So I'd like to say on behalf of Together 2012 CIC, how very welcome everybody is today. I'd like to thank our funders, Arts Council England and the National Lottery Community Fund, and the panellists who've agreed to share their experience and expertise today. We're going to hear from the Events Industry Forum, Queer House Party, Mahogany Carnival Design, Hackney Carnival, Edinburgh Festival Fringe Society, and Drs Adrian Leguina, might have pronounced that wrong, and Richard Misek. But this is also a conversation with everyone in this digital space. In order to help facilitate that, we have British Sign Language Interpretation from Borough Interpreting and live captions from Global Real-Time Captioning. You can use live chat to communicate with each other and with everybody in the space. And you can use the Q&A function to ask questions of the panelist or make points directly to them. With a bit of luck, we can also make breakout rooms available to you for lunchtime networking. But we also understand if you're just streaming us in the background, hoping to get some tips while you catch up with a mountain of work or have to pop in and out due to other commitments. Next, I'd like to go through the agenda. There's also a copy on the Eventbrite page and on the programme page on the www.together2012 website. So at 11 o'clock, we're going to start with the following set of questions. Disabled people are more vulnerable to COVID-19 and other infections, and this vulnerability is increased when access is poor. What actions can we take to minimise the barriers that disabled people encounter at festivals and outdoor events and ensure that Events Are Equality Act compliant? Robin is going to be chairing that session. We're going to be presenting our publication, Organising Inclusive Events. You've been sent a link to download a copy. And we're also going to be introducing you to our metrics for equality, access and inclusion. Then Jim Winship has recorded a presentation for us about the Purple Guide and also representing the Events Industry Forum in the discussion is Steve Heap from the Association of Festival Organisers. So the focus there is going to be very much on in-person activities and events. We'll have a 10 minute break at 5 to 12. Then we'll move on with Julie chairing to look at the following. The pandemic has taught us that we can engage directly with people at home. How can we continue to extend engagements with festivals and events to artists, art workers and audiences who cannot attend in person because of health conditions or shielding or caring responsibilities? We're going to be presenting Together 2012's Kitchen Carnival project with Clary Salandy of Mahogany Carnival Design. We're going to be hearing from Queer House Party about their work and then again a big discussion with live chat. So that's very much looking at blended delivery, but also online delivery and pure online delivery. Then we've got lunch from one to two. From two to three thirty, we're going to be discussing the following. Audiences for online events during the pandemic have been uneven and often disappointing, but the potential is unlimited. How can we grow online audiences for festivals and outdoor events, including targeting people who cannot attend in person due to geographic remoteness or because of health conditions or caring responsibilities? And how can we use online events to develop our brands and increase the number of events we produce annually? So we have Pax and Indy from Hackney Carnival at Home, Rebecca Monks from the Edinburgh Festival Fringe Society, and Dr Adrian Leguina and Dr Richard Misek 
from the University of Kent and Loughborough University present their research on digital access to arts and culture during the pandemic. And again, we open it up to discussion and conversation. And then the last half hour, if you can bear with us that long, we're going to be talking about moving forward, summarising the day and ideas for next steps. I know the Association of Festival Organisers is very keen to produce new resources. We're going to be updating our metrics and our access and inclusion guide in the new year. So everything that we discuss today will be feeding in to real tangible resources that will be used to improve inclusion because we found some solutions together. So that's the day's agenda. And next, I'd like to read you a poem by an artist who's a member of Together 2012's Pop-Up Poetry Club. And this is by Paisa Malik Neve, and it's called Festival. We disabled people enjoy festival, chance to get dressed and travel, to feel good and happy, relax and nothing to worry. During the discussion and planning, we put the best and keep thinking how to produce the best show, all lighted and colourful, forever glow in mind of audience and spectators, residents, local officials and visitors, all happiness, but not rivals. We find fun to have festivals. We enjoy seeing and meeting people. Try learn to relax and settle, working together during the planning, discussing ideas and costume making, designing the fashion, choreographing the dance, digging our hidden talents and giving us chance to offer our creative ideas and technique. Filling the festival with lots of fun and music for us to enjoy and be happy. Feeling really cheerful, but not moody. Paisa Malik Neve, who wrote that poem, is 78, Malaysian, and has always been a wheelchair user. She's also led a very rich life, traveling the world and working in a number of different countries as well as being married and adopting a son. She continues to perform as a dancer and an actor and to write poetry. Paisa wants to go to events on equal terms, not just as an, art, as an audience member, but as an artist. Let's see what we can do to make that happen today. We very often don't think, well, I would say we seldom, if ever, Think of artists and audience members like Paisa when we're designing our pop-up events, whether those are indoor, outdoor, whatever the genre, whatever the size of festival or event. Do we think of 78-year-old wheelchair users who speak English as an additional language as our being among our artists? No. Do we think of them as being amongst our audience? No. But they want to be. And like I say, that's what we're going to be discussing today. 